May 19th, year 2015. Oh my God. And we are starting a new broadcast. Um, it will be about healing and galactic Reiki. And I welcome Roxy and Dimitri. Hey, Roxy and Dimitri. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you. Do you have anything to say before I go? I'll get over here. <laughs> <laughs> Please repeat. There, is, there was a feedback. Oh, I just said I'm good over here. All right. Thank you. All right. I invite today my uh, new energy. Uh, his name is X3. X3 as a number three. And he comes, you can see, he will explain. I will go and um, bring, bring, invite him and see what, what, what happens. It will be the first time. Mm -hmm. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, just fine. Good. Hello. I would be X3 plus Max. <laughs> Max is here and he has invited me. It's an honor and a pleasure to speak in here in this capacity. <clears throat> I am Yael. X, X3 is my nickname, which I gave to Adrian Dvir, and you can see my simplified, symbolic portrait at his book on Amazon, X3, by Adrian Dvir. Today we'll uh, start talking about Galactic Reiki upon Max's invitation. Galactic Reiki. <sighs> yes, take it as a permission slip and the name take it as a convention. Something simplistically signifying healing energy, energy healing in a perspective, in a relation to the galaxy and to their healing art of your galactic friends. Reiki is a short name, yes. Reiki is a short name used on the, in the West for the Usui healing system of Reiki. Founded by Mikako Usui in Japan, a Qigon master. And it involves it involves using statically placed hands on the patients or in the air and exchanging healing energy with their energetic body of the patient. That's traditional Reiki. 
And by that time, it was... Hmm, an adaptation of ancient Eastern healing arts to the West. It was simplified, 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 purified, and in most pure form, you just hold hands and trust that the healing happens. There is a lot of teaching, a lot of complexity in their traditional Eastern healing arts. But for the West, there was a need for pure, simple form. And it was over a hundred years ago. Since then, theosophy came, many other teachings came, New Age came, hippies, and now it's light workers' philosophy. New Age philosophy, the teachings of us, our friend Bashar, our friend Roxy, Asipis, and others, and many other friends. They all come into the system. So, Reiki is perceived through a different, slightly different perspective, and it helps to reconnected to galactic understandings, which include many concepts. Reincarnation one. And time is now another one. All is one. All is love. Arcturian energy, Yael energy, Pleiadian energy, Andromedan energies, Syrian energies, reptilian energies, Orion, Zeta Gray, Draconian, Anunnaki, and many others. Some of them are very healing, and some of them are somewhat challenging. So all of that is to be reconnected. And it is being reconnected. Galactic Reiki is being channeled through many channels, channelers, healers, psychics, and so on. It all comes together as a network, as a framework of understanding. And I'm here just to remind you of that network, framework, and to serve you by answering questions and discussing different aspects of the galactic Reiki and energy healing arts in the perspective of the new understanding. Hey, Dimitri and Roxy, do you, would you like to speak? Um. I don't, I don't think I have anything to ask or say right now, except it's uh, fascinating, and I would like to, from the perspective, what <clears throat> really caught my attention was that from the perspective of a new perspective, and I know that perspective is the galactic perspective, so that's exciting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, where do I start? Let's speak a little bit again just to reiterate, just to reiterate what has been said before. One of the keys to new understanding is DNA. And DNA is not something absolutely new. The Western science was confused for a while, not understanding what DNA is, but for the last 70 years they do, which is great, and they understand the double helix, which is one of the keys to understanding the health and energies. The genetics was understood way before, even ancients understood genetics. Bloodlines were understood forever. The understanding of bloodlines never was lost, was never lost. It is just 
combining the idea of bloodline with a double helix, which is also ancient, combining it together and understanding, haha, it's molecule, it is actually physical, and at the same time it is an antenna, transdimensional antenna. It is a way to send and receive. And the living body, your physical living body, is impossible without other dimensional bodies, some of which are very close, etheric bodies, just beyond the veil, mimicking, also having its own DNA. Many bodies having their own DNA, their own code. And when you do Reiki, when you send healing energy with your hands, when you send healing energy with your heart, when you send healing energy with all your chakras, your DNA is talking to the patient's DNA, and your other dimensional DNA is talking to your patient's other dimensional DNA and crisscross. That's one of the principles, one of the main principles of Usui Reiki. I'm healing you. My higher self is healing you. I'm talking to your higher self and my higher self talks to your higher self. This is one of the key understandings of Reiki. And now the DNA is there as an antenna between physical and non-physical. Not the only antenna, but on one of the key antennas. And this brings us to another key where we come in, the galactics. You are a star seed, a star seed. How do I know? <laughs> How do I know that you are a star seed? How do I know? Tell me. What is a star seed? Yes. I don't know. Let's what hear. is a star seed? Different DNA. A star seed, yes, is someone who carries the DNA from the aliens. Yes, that DNA came from the stars. It was seeded onto the Earth. So people discover, oh, I'm not from here. I'm a star seed. I'm seeded here. I am a missionary. I am a spy, a hybrid, I'm implant, I'm, I am an implant into the human society. And can anyone be wrong about it? Ah. No, because everyone, every human living on Earth is a star seed. Ah, oh, surprise. But obviously, if you were created with our DNA much time ago, how can you not carry our DNA? Everyone on Earth, every human has a certain percent of us, a certain percent of how do you call them? Uh, of more earthly beings, of some beings which were, hmm, how to say, maybe primate predecessors, ancestors, who are more ancient. But because Earth life was cross-pollinated with alien life all the time, there is nothing purely earthly. Everything has more ancient alien and less ancient alien DNA. And all of that, most of that has been hmm, adjusted to the Earth. So be having that mixture of very ancient and less ancient 
gene sequences of DNA helps you to feel at home on Earth, helps you to survive on Earth. Moreover, you evolved, you, you started with all this collection of random and non-random alien genes and then they evolved through the Darwinian evolution. You start with seeds and then they evolve, they mix together, they evolve through the natural selection and unnatural selection and intentional manipulation. They evolve to make you at home on Earth and be able to survive first on higher dimensional Earth and then as it was grounded and grounded down and down in vibration. Your DNA allows you to survive even at the lowest possible vibration and actually prosper and multiply to great numbers. So that creation is of your own, your new genome, which is a hybrid genome. Every human is a hybrid. Some of them have, some of you have newly implanted genes and all of you have older, ancient and less ancient and medieval implanted genes. So every one of you is a star seed. Hoo-ha. Yeah. 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 Please comment. Hello, new people. Hello, new people. I am X3 plus Max. Who do I have here? Casey, nice to see you smiling. Hello. Hello. Chief. Jonathan, Hi. I never met you. Never met you. And Max never met you. Keith, hey. Liney. All right, I'm back. Hmm. Please talk. Thank you for that perspective. It was very enlightening. I feel like we were having some trouble discerning that truth. So that's nice to clear up just that we're all hybrids and we all have this higher dimensional DNA within us. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. So anyone can wake up and say, I'm a starseed. Now, from that point on, there is a choice to take it or to choose to ignore it or reject it. Many people have been pondering, awakened to the fact, and then some chose to accept it and some chose to reject it. And it is your choice. It's a choice of perspective. The fact that someone is starseed doesn't make them think like a starseed. They can choose to inhibit it or just ignore altogether. It's their choice. Most of humanity, they have been exposed to that idea already. They already know they are star seeds and they choose to ignore it. Now, if you choose to explore that idea, you have the choices. You have choices to choose the star which you want to align with. That is even more mind-bending. It's even more mind-bending because you create your reality. Whatever you focus on is creating the new reality for you. So if you are excited about the idea of being connected to Arcturian energy and your understanding of your genomic ancestry comes to you and you discover Arcturian infusion within you same with reptilian, same with Pleiadian, same with any other star and galactic race. 
because you have it all. And the more you focus on it, the more it is becoming uncovered, expressed, manifested. It feels very, it might feel very unreal. How can you create your reality this way? But it seems to be working just fine for you and it works just fine for us. When you call for us, we are here. Yael were not much known with this name, under this name. So people didn't think of us as your ancestors. But now we are here and we will be happy to be your siblings, brothers and sisters. When you call for us, we are here to serve you, to play with you, to mingle with you, to bring you up, and to be with you when you are down. Please talk. Yes. How can you assist us more? Because I, I have an idea of creating my own uh, animated short movie. And if you, JL, can assist me in that way, can, can they do that? or? What is the purpose? What is the intention? I don't know yet. Ha. Huh. Play with the idea. And think it through enough to get you excited. Right now, you're discovered in yourself that you can do that. Now, close the circle and imagine what will happen when you do that. It doesn't have to be realistic, but you have to close the loop to understand the purpose. Who is your target audience? And for you, my dear Gabby, it might be the purpose of reconnecting back to the ground. You are so much with us, so you need our help to reconnect back to the ground, to real people. And we'll be happy to help with our energies to reconnect to real people. But basically, you are a leader, again, you discover a leader in yourself. Create a community. It could be two people, could be three people. Create a group of people who are as excited as you are. Yes, what, what I've been feeling is that I need to bring in people that have talent in certain ways and bring them together. So the people who are good with music will help me with the music part of the animation and those are good at drawing things that can draw things for me for creating it. And people who have ideas Yes and they can might bring, bring an idea of real message and the form which you want to put in this message. Mm, no, the form which you can frame this message in. So it becomes popular and people will like it and you get millions of likes and views. Yes. Yes, I want to be in the middle taking everything, everything, taking all people's talents and bringing it up together to a format that works. And the first <laughs> advice would be make it a series. Start small and simple and then grow your channel, grow grow your YouTube and other ways of channeling because when you create the first little tiny piece it has its own life, it gets its own life and you create characters, you create a framework and from there, from this stepping stone you can go up, up and up. Some very talented people, they get it all together in one shot. It's also possible. But don't, hmm, if, if you are able to make the first small one, make it soon, so then you get practice 
going from the beginning to the end and getting feedback from the audience, which is invaluable. Yes. Hmm. Maybe show it first to the few friends to make sure you don't get disappointed if you put something out and nobody notices it. Maybe you need to tweak it first to make it really funny, really attractive. It doesn't have to be complex. Some of the successful cartoons are very simplistic, very amateur and simplistic, and still very popular and carry the message. I wish to learn what message you want to carry. I guess you yes. have to come up with that message. Yes, the story and the characters, I have no idea yet. So that's all. Ah, the story. Because I the just got, got the feeling today that I always want to do it and now I feel it's time to do it. Mm. Yeah, so, speak to Peter, he knows platforms. Peter knows platform. He is in the field for many, many years. He is a pro. Can I add an idea? X, can I add an idea? This is Roxy. Uh, why do I need to approve it? You're talking to Gabe, right? Yes. Oh, please go ahead. Thank you. Gabe, there's these five dogs that I sat for when I was house-sitting. Noodle, Teeny, Sister, Leo, and Coco. And they all had their own individual personalities, their own life, if you will. And I said one day, this would be a great cartoon characters because they all have their own personalities and they're very funny when they interact with each other. And you can see their personalities come out. Coco is uh, a brown and tan dog, uh, kind of like a, eh, not the, not, a lopsa opsa, but that kind of idea, but not really a lopsa opsa. The other ones are chihuahuas. Noodle tongue sticks out of her mouth all the time and she talks like this she goes hey guys how are you doing and you're just optimistic about everything you know she's got a little bit of a lisp and she's freaking hilarious and teeny is the fun nazi whenever the other dogs are having fun she comes in and rah, 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 don't have fun and coco just smiles and sister is like this you know this uh, african american woman she goes what's up what's up what you all doing and she talks like that and I, we would play, all of us that were house-sitting together, we would do the voices of the dogs as they were talking. And we thought this would be a great cartoon animation. This may not be it for you, but it is definitely an idea to ponder upon. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Roxy. You're welcome. It's very cute. Have fun. Maybe I should have Yim as a cartoon character go around with his house moving out. <laughs> it looks so funny. <laughs> Hello, Yim. Hello, Let's how go. are you? Jim, what's up, baby? Oh, I'm just hanging out for a few minutes. Uh, and I wanted to see Max channeling, and I love it, so. Hello, Jim. Yes. <laughs> How you doing? <sighs> I'm good. That's good. That's wonderful. You look so happy, and you have such a glow about you, Max. It's good. Great. Well, thank you. I love it. My mind is empty right now. I'm st I stepped out and I'm not fully here. My mind is always empty, dear. My mind <laughs> is always empty. <laughs> it's, an, it's an okay thing. Sometimes you have to think about your bills and stuff, but most of the time I'm just walking around trying to do something good. <laughs> so, so, Jim, do you have any question while Max is channeling? Um, no, For the it uh, is. It's your time now to ask. <laughs> oh, it's my time to ask. <laughs> yeah. 
actually, uh, he's. I understood everything he said, and I agree with it all. So um, no, I don't really have any questions. It's um, we all have a bit of a star seed in us, and a lot of us are uh, trying to work on making that even a greater thing because. As a as a race, we're like the saviors of the universe, from what I come to understand, because of how we intermingled and bred and different things with different species. So our our immune system is greater now than it um, it was before, and that's why some tried to destroy it, but um, it won't happen. We're going to we will we will continue to exist. So that's cool. Yeah, I always wondered about um, immune systems and things, and when we do get to physically interact with them, you know, I was kind of a bit concerned about us giving them diseases, but it doesn't seem, doesn't sound like it's going to be like that. No, actually, once you get the hybridization and stuff, it's going to help your immune system uh, get rid of some diseases and uh, strengthen other parts, other things. I'm not, I'm not real clear on how it works or what it's supposed to actually do, but I get the idea that the intermingling of all the different uh, species will make a strong, a strong immune system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. X3 is here. Um, nice, you brought that question. So the question was. Could there could we the aliens pick up an infection from humans down on Earth? And the answer would be yes and no in the form of physical infection. We are well protected from physical infections on Earth. Uh, our technologies are quite advanced so when, whenever the infection comes in we have very simple ways to sequence it and nuke it out, knock it out very simply mm, technologically by using certain vibrations we just explode all the sequences which we don't like it's very easy um, how do you call them? Mm, black projects on Earth. Humans have the technology too. They can easily knock out the sequences by vibrations. Although they use it for weaponry. Uh, yeah. And even mainstream science on Earth is very close to making air designer vaccines for any sequences. Very close. It doesn't mean that all the diseases will go away, but HIV, hepatitis, and things of that sort, uh, the science, mainstream science, is very close to solving it. It will be expensive, though, at early stages, but technically it's, it's already there. Not using the frequencies, but still the major idea. When w once you know the sequence, you can hunt it down. It's already there. Now, the energetic, higher dimensional, lower dimensional, non-physical infections are a bit tougher. A bit tougher. Now we are talking not about physical sequences, but sort of dimensional sequences. But we're talking about spiritual viruses, etheric viruses, dark energies, that's what you call dark energies, yes. It is a, how do you call it, egotistic, pathological, psychopathic, yeah, it's psychopathic vortex, a sequence, a virus, it's like a computer virus. Those are tougher because those are Evolving and dark energies, dark entities, negative energies, negative entities. They're pretty smart in designing those viruses, so we have to watch those. 
Mm, but it shouldn't concern you that much. It is uh, not from your dimension. That problem is not your dimensional. And we are used to have immunity to those as well. So we are dealing with those. So when you are talking, when we are speaking about psychic attacks, and that's just another way of describing our spiritual computer viruses. Yeah. Nothing unusual, though. It's all common thing here. Mm. I wanted to speak to you. Yes, go ahead. Hi. Um, yeah, can I ask you about um, the injections that we get here on Earth to prevent us from getting disease, certain illnesses and things? I want to hear your take on, on that. Is, is it a good thing um, with these injections or...? Uh, or not. I understand the question. The question is, mm, vaccinations, are they good or bad? And how much of the conspiracy and how much of mm, mischief and just common nonsense is there? Yeah. And um, everything is present there. And again, it is, you create your own reality. It is, both ideas are present here. Vaccines as a good thing, which is an achievement of science, which is smart, which hunts specifically a certain type of infection. Yes. And protects you. It trains your immunity to protect you from that kind of infection. That is absolutely there. And another idea is mm, conspirators, negative humans and others uh, bringing down the vibration of humanity by vaccinations and making their human bodies less perfect and more more chaotic, more disorganized by unneeded vaccinations. Both ideas are correct. And third idea is just too much of fear of any infection. The fear of any infection causes unneeded vaccinations which also, without any conspiracy, without any negative intention, which also bring down your health and make it more disorderly. All three ideas are here. Good idea, intermediate, no conspiracy, just, I don't know a better word than stupidity, or maybe I need it, I need it, impractical precautions. Yeah, impractical precautions, that's a better word, expression. And third is conspiracy and bringing down the vibration through vaccinations. All three are present, and you play with all three. And you play in your way, these are your choices. I would gently suggest, don't focus on negativity, don't focus on conspiracies. Keep in mind they are there, but don't make it your passion because most likely it will just bring your vibration down without without actually doing anything good to anyone. But you have to educate yourself just a little bit without really feeling down, without really being scared. Mm. Just a moment, I'm retrieving the name of the book. DNA, DNA. The Pirates of Double Helix, that's the name of the book. The Pirates of the Double Helix. The Pirates of the Double Helix. Google it. <sighs> yeah, you can check it out. Don't get too much immersed in it. It's a conspiracy theory pretty well reviewed about vaccinations. Some of that is correct, but again, it, you create your reality. The humanity creates its own reality. It's uh, an idea which is a suggestion. It is not dominant yet, so it's not fully manifested. It is there in parallel realities, in 
a template reality. You can pull it in your reality and it becomes a whole huge nightmare. Or you can just be aware of it and not to choose it and it just you pass it by without really immersing in it. Now, personal choices. So I have to put period here. I don't recommend focusing on it, but be aware. Is it easy? Yes, period. Now, personal choices. Understand, mm, understand that there are really bad infections and there are intermediate and very slight infections. When we are talking about genetic upgrade, Every flu is a form of a genetic upgrade. Every flu, every infection is a form of a genetic upgrade or downgrade. Every, it is a form of genetic modification. So we are talking about, you are talking about the aliens giving you a sequence of DNA and upgrading you. Understand that this is a tiny bit of what you are experiencing every now and then, every month or so, every few months or so, every maybe two weeks or so, you are experiencing genetics, uh, genetic upgrades through your infections. They come and they modify your vibration somewhat. Some of them modify it slightly, some modify it strongly, some of them imprint huge amount of DNA change, that's not the right expression, produce a big change and some of them produce a small change in your genetics but all of them do produce some change in your genetics because all of those are genetic. The viruses and the bacteria and the fungus and the yeast and all of those are genetic. They and even your mainstream scientists understand that all of those exchange their DNA with your DNA, get their DNA into your system, not all your cells, but some of your cells, and there is jumping of the genetic information back and forth happening there. Don't get scared, it's all common thing and has been happening for the whole history of life on Earth. Your mitochondria are alien to your cells, so you have a lot of your a lot of different crosstalk and mm, cross hybridization between different life forms. Nothing unusual here. What you eat imprints on you. What you eat, vegetables, meat, all of that imprints on you. You can find traces of all of those in your physical body. Even mainstream science now studies that it's funded research. It's mainstream research now. What I was talking about. I was talk answering the question, do you worry about vaccinations? You choose every time. Every time, do a little bit of research and decide where you want to vaccinate yourself and which vaccines do you want to take and which not which do you not some of them are some of them are obligatory and some of them are optional and do your homework and choose because even mainstream science understands that there is a side effect of any vaccine and some of them affect your immunity in somewhat negative way causing allergies, autoimmune responses, arthritis, and other things, but mainly autoimmune things like allergies and arthritis. And how do you call it? Gut, gut inflammation and other things and headaches and things of that sort because your immunity becomes a little bit confused it's not natural to get immunizations. It, the human design is not used to getting immunizations through the way they're done now. But the whole idea is not necessarily bad. It's just the way it is done 
mm, yet imperfectly. Injections of things are not yet natural. It could be done better. Your science is getting there, not yet, but it's getting there. So the idea is not bad by itself, but there is a dark side to it, and there is mm, semi-dark gray side to it. So make your choices. Don't get too scared. Some of the immunizations are helping, and actually are helping globally to minimize the damage from infections. The whole system of your ecology, whole system of your mm, huge population which didn't die from infections for over a hundred years mm, is very unstable. We are helping somewhat, but it's not very natural for the system to be expanding that fast without epidemics. Epidemics are actually mm, more natural in the whole history of humanity, whole history of life on Earth. There were epidemics and only now the medicine and immunizations allow and clean way of life and that sort of thing allow to minimize epidemics. But having them on smaller scale would actually be healthier for the genomes, for the global genome, for the global biology of humans. Having s limited epidemics would actually be healthier than staying away from that. It is like, let me give you an example, it's like protecting your child so much from anything that by the time they go to college they don't know anything and they get exposed to all kinds of negativity without being protected. So smart parents allow a child to experience here, that and that and get their own, how do you call them, traumas while they're under protection of parents. So by the time they go to college they are already somewhat mature and they know things and are not completely innocent in that way. So same thing for humanity. The medicine maybe, especially in the West, protects humans too much from epidemics, too much from infections. So by the time it might fail, the humanity would be too vulnerable to those. Mm, so that probably problem is understood even by mainstream science and it has to be addressed in a smarter way. I hope I mm, was clear, somewhat clear and I delivered these two ideas. The idea number one, be aware but don't get too focused on it and second, for every choice of mm, immunization, you have to do a little bit of research and decide how bad would be the outcome and how likely would be that you get this infection. So choose smartly. Thank you for asking, that was an interesting question. We think about that a lot. This is a huge part of our research as well. Great, thank you. I'm sorry for speaking too wordly. It is the first time I formulate these ideas and it takes some practice to can make them concise. You're doing very great. Thank you. I, I have a question. Yes. A lot of ETs are helping humanity and I wonder is when is it time for humanity to start helping other ETs as well? Ah, great question, thank you. You are helping the way you do. You making the cartoon will help us. Uh, follow your highest excitement. We are nearby. We are blowing excitement, blowing um, inspiration into you. We are your spirits. We are from other dimensions. So when you feel inspiration, it's us nearby saying, hey, hey, go forward. So that's the way you help. And of course, you help by being our, what's that word? Scouts. You are our scouts, yes. So you are helping the way you do. 
you the best way you can do help us is by ascending personally and collectively globally that's why we talk about ascension all the time that's you and that's your main choice that's the bag the best impact you can make on the galaxy and dimensions yes uh, you want some simple help you want to drive our ships yeah like uh, shoot our guns right some of you are doing that too but it's it's minor compared to the idea of playing on the ground and being being us helping ascension yes I have a question. Ah. It's a little bit off topic. Are you okay with that? Oh, yes, Jonathan, thank you. I wanted to in exchange with you, interact with you. Thank you for coming through. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I've been reading a lot of conspiracy theories lately, and, you know, you've been going on about not, you know, being aware of the conspiracies but not dwelling on them. Um, and there's a conspiracy that's going around that a lot of people are believing in again, and it's uh, the flat earth theory. And I was wondering, like, is that, like, what's really going on, too? Like, is our earth really flat and we're being kept in for some reason? <sighs> we are not familiar with that at the moment. Um, please expand on that. Okay, um, there was a guy in the uh, 50s who uh, explored Antarctica and said that there was... Oh, yes, uh, yes. There was a, um, a land that was rich in minerals. Yes. That was about the size of North America beyond uh, Antarctica. And then after uh, they made another expedition, they just... They and going over there, they you know, they stopped all uh, explorations past Antarctica. You know, they put danger signs and all that stuff. You know, and they're keeping people out of Antarctica. I was just wondering uh, what the the reason for that is, and one of the reasons uh, someone came up with is the flat Earth theory, which is uh, it's on the um, United Nations flag and it's this this picture of the earth and it's flat in like kind of a uh, kind of like a plate type thing with like a dome and uh, Antarctica circles around kind of like a, a barrier and I was just wondering I was actually wondering if uh, if that was actually a thing or if that's just you know just another wild conspiracy theory. I know, like, it's, the question's way out there. It's, like, off-topic but on-topic at the same time. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm sure as I research it more and I think about it more, by next time I would get better insight into the depths of this sim symbology. But my first... My first take on it, take it as just a suggestion. It is a, one of those it is one of those optional realities which are here to explore, but they are not anywhere close to becoming mainstream. They are not anywhere close to becoming manifested in this mm, global kind of fashion. It is not very close to your mm, collective human consciousness. Consciousness. No. Yes, it is mostly should be taken as a portal. Yes, of course, there are portals there. And that's why mm. Antarctica was so attractive to, was so attractive to Nazis and you name it, uh, main world powers and black projects, uh, there are portals there. So yes, they 
step into other dimensional Earths where these things happen. It's not actually uh. physically there. It's more like dimensional portal where they can access it. And sometimes it's widely open. Sometimes it's partly open. Sometimes it's completely closed. And with technologies and spiritual manipulation or transdimensional manipulation, they can open it, get there, get something transferred back. So this is quite, quite possible. But to I mean, become that explains in, it. Yeah, to Portal. become in that <laughs> physically there, so everyone can take a vacation there. It's it's not very close. It it is a possibility. It could be so much open that it becomes part of the part could become part of the global reality where everyone knows it's real, but but not in this timeline. And in this timeline, it's more like a portal than a real thing. Again, it's a decision of a global human collective how they want to play this game. But that option might have been there when things didn't crystallize yet. Let's say 70 years ago, reality. Then it was more like more considered to be interesting. But then it was dropped, and their spheric Earth is more an accepted reality which is more manifested. Now you can see it from anywhere. You have a camera, a real-time camera watching it all the time. You can click the button and see the Earth from the space at any time in real time. So it is so real, the <laughs> spirit Earth. It's so real. It's hard yeah, to I was just wondering flatten about it that. again. You're welcome. Yes, that's a great question. Well, tell me about your highest excitement uh, beyond the flat Earth. <laughs> <laughs> that was flat. just something I was uh, I was um, researching just because you know boredom. Anywho, <laughs> my highest excitement. I'm still pretty unfocused on the last time I talked to Yahil. Uh, I'm still trying to find my focus, so I'll get back to you on that. I'll get back to you on that. Nothing wrong with searching. <laughs> Being unfocused might be your highest excitement at the moment. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be focused. Although staying focused hmm, gives you a different experience. A different experience. It provides you with uh, more focused energies when you make a choice. Just make a choice for the moment and invite energies to come through. Then you explore the direction with much more information and energies coming through. The life becomes richer. And then you are free to choose another direction. But just making a choice from, from that unfocused state often helps to resolve it. Mm. Some even consider that unfocused state to be a disorder, a psychic disorder, a not disorder, it's the wrong word, mm. imbalance, Im mm. yeah, mm. there is a saying that, yes, yeah. Well, it's not like I can't find a focus, it's that, you know, at this moment I'm not focused on anything. I know if I focus on something, it can become reality, right? So <laughs> I just haven't focused on anything today yet, so I haven't manifested, you know, consciously anything. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what is your month and day of birth? My month is May. My date of birth is the 13th. I see. I'm supposed to be stubborn, according to my month. <laughs> and grounded. <laughs> my zodiac sign. And, and grounded, gr yeah. And loyal. Yeah. And a good leader. I see that. Yes. Um, do you so, consider yourself a hybrid? Um, I think I am. 
I think I am. I got a, uh, when I was meditating one time, I got uh, kind of a, oh, where is it? My room's a mess. My mind's a mess. My room's a mess. So I lose things easily. <laughs> uh, I drew a picture of um, I have a lot of stuff on my floor okay I drew a picture of an ET I saw while meditating and it seems as though it's going to take a lot more than you know what's around me to search for it but uh, it's not a gray, but it has wider eyes. Can I get a picture online from it? That's uh, all right. Anywho. That's all right. We can... And then I got, I got the... <laughs> I got the uh, kind of like the words and a feeling of home, sort of. Like, I felt it at home, and then, like, you know, a word that said home in my mm -hmm. mind, if that makes any sense. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Uh, just a suggestion. Okay. Make a home in your mind, in your soul. Make a space which more feels like home. I don't know, maybe you feel home to be a mess, but for a change, make a little space which is neat in your mind. I would suggest take... Hmm. Are, you, are you driving a car? Are you driving a car? Uh, no, I don't drive. I walk everywhere. You don't drive a car. Mm, what is your way, favorite way I of don't. cleaning? <laughs> what was your way, favorite way of cleaning? <laughs> Are you much on the computer? My favorite way of cleaning? Yeah. I am very much on the computer. Yeah, so your favorite way of cleaning may be running a cleanup program or defragmenting a drive or cleaning up your folder on a computer. Could it be? Okay. So take uh, it. Yes. I don't. I'm not really into programming stuff, but like I see, I see where you're going. I see where you're going. I okay. just wanted to give you a symbol of cleaning which you can do with your soul and mind. Find some space where everything is in order and it's clean and empty. So there is a place where things can come, like a landing platform. Yes, create a landing platform for us and higher dimensional energies. Make a home for us in your soul. Make a home for us in your room. It doesn't have to be the whole room. Just mm, uh, there is uh, a sacred place in some of their new age rooms. They take a little surface, like a little table or place on the surface, and place some mm, nice piece of fabric, like a little blanket, and some stones in certain pattern, and becomes a center of crystallization. So that's what I would suggest. Do it in any way which is comfortable for you. Maybe in your mind, maybe on your wall, on your table, on your computer, anywhere. Start crystallizing, but make a place for us, make a home for us, and we will come. Ah, okay. Okay. So just so I'm not misunderstanding this, I need to make a, create a, a dimension in my mind, where you guys can uh, can meet me is that is that what's going on? Yes. Kind of like a home. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Something you create, imagine, build, kind of play with the idea. Hmm. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's been a pleasure talking. I won't I won't take too much more of your time. Thank but you. if I find that picture before this ends, I will have to show it to you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Make us a home and we will come. And it, it obviously is true to all of you and all of the humanity. 
build for us a, a landing platform and it will come. Like did how do you call it? Nesca lines? Nesca lines? Peru? Nazca lines, yes, Nazca. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. I did have a question um, for you. I wanted to know how I could tell um, the difference, like what would be, I guess, warning signs or symptoms that I'm getting infusions of like new DNA or like, I don't know how to go about understanding logically the difference between me awakening the DNA that's already here and getting like download or insertions of new DNA. Could you like help clarify that for me? Yes. Thank you. Great question. Great couple of questions. One is about upgrade. Another one is about awareness. Yes. Understand, please. You are getting upgraded no matter what. You are changing so fast. You are evolving. You, every one of you is evolving so fast. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, some of you don't survive that. But most of you do, and we congratulate you with surviving the upgrades. It's great. And uh, some of that is brought by us. Other upgrades are more global and natural. It's sent not to person, but to the whole system. And we play on both fronts. Again, it is by invitation. Yes. And some of those are very natural. It's more divine upgrades. They are more natural. There is no physical aliens involved. It's more like your advanced. When the virus comes to you, it can pick up your sequences, your vibrations. Some of you are advanced hybrids. And then they pick it up and spread it over and keep it going to others. So. You spread your vibrations not only through your communications, but also through your coughing and sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah, so so the upgrades happen anyway. Now, DNA upgrade. When people talk about the D DNA upgrade, it's more not not spreading it but upgrading which means reconnecting your DNA to your other dimensional bodies. It takes a lot of purification and it takes removal of blockages and Reiki and other healing energy arts are greatly helpful to reconnect. It is much of that is by intention and some of that is really helped by healers and happiness, actually creative happiness. So when we say what is your highest excitement and we say make a choice and go there with passion. One of the causes, one of the goals here is in that state of altered state being high, creative, all together in one piece. Yes. Coherent. High and coherent. That's the key word. It's being high and coherent. Being coherent. You know the word coherent meaning in harmony. Being in harmony and high in energy and following your passion. 
having a good idea and following this good idea through, that upgrades your DNA because that's when the bolt of lightning comes through and there is enough energy to wash away the blockages and reconnect your physical DNA to your other dimensional body's DNA. So that happens and the prescription here is follow the highest excitement, make a choice, be passionate, purify yourself, purify, clean up, wipe, delete, put it on a shelf, clean up your spiritual space, your physical space, clean it up. Purity is essential. Forgiveness is essential. Acceptance with this creation is essential. You accept everything, but some of that you accept, put in your heart, and some of that you accept and put on the shelf. Some of that you accept, put in the heart, some of that you accept and put in the trash can. Right? All right. So that is upgrade. Follow your passion and all of the above. Now, how do you know you have been upgraded? Mm, you don't have to. The awareness is optional, but of course it helps. Look for it, look, look for the signs, look for confirmations, and again, doubt is, the doubt is, unfortunately, you are still under the, oh, fortunately, it's your choice, you under the trial, you're being tested, it is your, one of the main tests. It is a test of can you choose good without any confirmation? Can you choose truth without any confirmation? Can you choose by a leap of faith? So <laughs> you cannot make a tiny step and say, mm, am I there or not? You cannot take a, a medium-sized step and say, am I there or not? You really have to jump there. And when you are there, you're looking at yourself from the new perspective and you say, of course I have been upgraded, of course I'm different, of course I'm already there, but it takes a leap of faith to jump there. And again, jump there but not off the bridge. Don't jump off the bridge without having a parachute. Don't jump off the plane without having a parachute. We are not recommended that you make a leap of faith into the darkness. Make a leap of faith into the good, but not the darkness. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Great question. And there is much more to say, but it's time for me to wrap up and let Max come back to his routines. I, I found the picture. Oh, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. All right. It looks similar to that. We don't hear, we don't see it yet. You have to share the screen. Okay. It's a. Uh, you have to click on the drawn on paper. Present to everyone. Ah, uh, uh, see here. Okay. Yeah, hi, my Max. computer's going really yes, hi. right now. So. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Who's um, speaking? Sabrina. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Sabrina. Do you want to speak to me or Extreme? Both no, of us here. You, you, you. All right. 
All right, here's um, Sabrina. I'm here. Um, I did a drawing of Rojo. Oh wow! Thank you. Um, it was actually by accident. I didn't know who I was drawing, but to Kurt told me. Are you showing it? Uh, well done. Ah, oh. Jonathan, we see it now. Oh yes. Okay. I am going to stop. Yeah, my computer's really uh really slow because it's a Mac from like six five six years ago. <laughs> That's still working. We see it fine. Nice image. Thank you. Okay. I never looks seen, similar to that. I never I'm sorry for interrupting. Any one of that, that kind. The picture is has frozen, so that we only see the picture. Or Can you say that again? Yeah, I saw the picture. It was very, very nice. I, I won't. S it the entity looks quite interesting. Do you have a name for it? No, no. Right. It just popped up. And I drew it, so but that's weird that like you guys don't know what entity it is. I don't either. It just showed up. Okay. <laughs> Sabrina, are you coming with the picture? Hold well on. Here you go. Oops. Wow. Oh. We can see it well. Thank you. What is this picture? Oh, it was a picture of Rojo. That's... Yeah. Oh. I can I... see it. Show it, Sabrina. Oh, I it did it on, on... Can you show it again? I, saw I did it, it on impulse. I was gardening, and I have this sh shed with concrete on the floor, and there was char charcoal there from the year before that we had uh, done a fire, you know, build a fire. Mm -hmm. So I just picked up the charcoal and started drawing it on the floor. Wow! Can you sh can you show it again? Yeah. Gabriel missed it. I saw it. But when I was looking, I didn't realize it was Rojo. Although you said, I just didn't pay attention. Little down. Perfect. Interesting. Yeah. One more, one more, once more. Little closer. I will, I'm taking a screenshot, but if you can send it to us, it would be nice. I can oh, just okay. send it to you. Don't, yeah, just you don't need to do all right. that. All right. Actually, all right. I think it's in the it's in the galactic language chat box somewhere. There's galactic language post. chat box. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let's start with the closing sequence. Um, well, any any announcements before we go? Yes, I. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for sending your donations. Your donations really help. And I started doing private sessions, and that goes really well. I really love doing that. It's it's very different than public sessions. Very different. Um, it works well so far for me and for the people. So I invite more private sessions. I raise the price a little bit, but still, it's it's affordable. So. I invite people for private sessions and uh, send donations to me. The, uh, the address is max at humancolony.org. It's the address to reach me and also to send the donations through PayPal. And um, we are more active now at uh, Google Plus Human 
uh, Hukala community and Hukala page. So check it out. And um, um, we are both active on uh, humancolony.org site and on Hukala Plus site. And Facebook site also, we, uh, Hukala Facebook also, we are there. So um, these are, I guess, all my announcements. The other ones are posted on the website. Anybody? Yeah, we're going to have Rob Goff here this Saturday webinar. Aha. Uh -huh. What I understand. So uh, exciting to people to come in and join in and watch it and ask questions to him as well, together with him. So that's upcoming. Yeah, another question I had, um, if anybody has a meetup.com account, usually it comes with three meetups, and I need uh, one of those to start a local meetup in Chicago, so I would, would be happy to chip in to get my own uh, meetup. Uh, it's like, if you buy one spot, you get three, three groups, so I, I need one of the three. Or if someone wants to uh, pay for two groups and I can pay for one group, we can uh, create a joint account. That would be nice as well. Meetup.com is great for local gatherings. It's the best way to get people of like mind to come to you. And um, usually people start from you know, a public room, Starbucks, Panera Bread, uh, beach, forest, park, and uh, then it's uh, a, a room in a church or in a library, and sometimes you can set up a computer and do the webinar with local people, which you invite from meetup.com. Jim now, last time had 11, 11 visitors, most of them come through, they, they know, know about the Saturday webinar, they find out about Saturday webinar from uh, the group Metaphysical Meetup at meetup.com, which I created. Roxy? Everybody? Anybody want to, to say anything? Let's do the blessings. Okay. Anybody else wants to do it? Gabriel. Okay, I'll do it, Max. All right. Let me first make sure this is the reader. Okay. Tāna kū tu kū lāna sā tāsu, o rāna kī tu ālātu, hō nā kāri yu tōru tu, hā nā sūru ātā, i yu lō nā kī o tu mā sū, hō rā tī yī o lō nā Han O sono kuwa tatu. E na siyo ta hana sutu ku. O kakari niyo. O sa tiyo tiyo tiyo. I got something from that. When we, when you grew up, as humanity grew up, like coming a big 
flower, beautiful flower, and you growing up and showing the universe. As the universe shines to the flower, the flower is growing up and showing the universe how beautiful it is that it is humanity. That's what I got from you. Or from some place else. Beautiful, Gabriel. Good, Good Gabriel. It I'll was even reflect. beautiful in my head. Wonderful. I'll reflect on it. I was looking for a way to the stars. The, but the way went down, and every step brought me down, down, and down. And I looked under my feet, and I saw the mud. And I was careful not to fall into the mud. So all what I was focusing was the mud. And the way was down, down, and down. And when I was already all in the mud, I couldn't look at it anymore because it was so absorbing, so dense, so thick, so disgusting. Then I looked up and I saw the stars. And as I focused on the stars, my way became clearer. And as I cleaned myself up, my way went up. And as I became happier by choice, as I choose to be happy, as I choose to be light, I was brought up. And I was with the stars and with the, with the universe. And I'll add one more thing. I welcome a star seed in you. You are a star seed. And it is your choice to accept it or to reject it or to ignore it. We approve of any of your choices. It's up to you to choose. We respect your choices. And you are a healer. If you live to this age, if you hear me, if you are alive, you are a healer. Because otherwise you wouldn't be able to survive to this point. You are a healer. It's your choice to embrace it or to reject it or to ignore it. We respect your choice, whatever you choose. But you can choose to be aware of your star seed origins and to be aware of your healer capacity. And as if you choose to embrace those, if you embrace those, it will be a step to us. And we will respect that and step forward to you. And we will meet halfway. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody. Write to me to max at humancolony.org. Find us at humancolony.org and on Google Plus, search for Hucola, and on Facebook, search for Hucola, H U C O L O. And goodbye, everybody. Till next time. Bye. Till next time, Max. Love you, baby. Love you, baby. Bye. Right, thank you. Thank you, Dimitri. Bye, Gabe. Bye, Jonathan. Bye, Lainey.